And so on this particular one, we are watching an interview by Mac G that was done yesterday, um, or it was premiered yesterday, uh, between him and and Loiso, I think that's his name. Um, and he's the actor from The Queen, and so he's talking about uh, his atheism and all that kind of stuff, like how far it goes back and the whole nine yards. So we're gonna listen. And then uh, make a reaction. We'll answer to what we know, what we don't, we we'll leave out. <laughs> okay, this is why you need uh, all kinds of Christian um, apologies because then they can answer to all these different varieties of, of questions. I am a little bit more of a Christian doctrine apologist, okay, so I focus on that. But then there are, you know, creation apologies and also there are also Islamic apologies who study Christianity and answer like J. Smith, uh, David Wood. And so I, if you are interested in the subject, here is a video. Please go ahead and answer and holler back when you have answered so that we can give a shout out to all the answers that you show up. And so we're going to watch this one and let's go. Because you know these trolls, you know, they'll go straight to that. No, of course. But, but again... I know why I got into this industry. I, I, I know enough about myself to be secure about myself. And those things don't, don't, don't faze me at all, man. Speaking about God, why are you an atheist? Uh, why I'm an atheist is simply because uh, I'm not convinced that it's true. Mm. Right? So, and because when people ask you, like, do you believe in God? You know, mm. my, often my first question is, okay, which one? <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, which one? Because I want to have that conversation. I want to understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's willing to have the conversation, and so that's a good thing. Others they dismiss it. They like, which one? And then don't wait for for an answer. Like Pilate asks, "What is the truth?" When he's interrogating Jesus, and he doesn't bother to wait for the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yes, I've been surrounded by Christianity almost mm. my whole life. Mm. Um, and I was never really convinced with it. I mean, maybe as a child, when you buy into the the Noah's Ark, mm. you know, I think we all knew that story growing up. Mm. Mm. But you, 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 and there's a reason why they teach it to kids. Uh, What's the reason? Well, because I'm interested in that reason too. You, your your critical thinking faculties aren't, aren't there yet. You, Is that why they teach it to kids? Can't mm. think for yourself. Mm. You don't ask mm. the questions. Oh yeah, you you you. As a child, especially a young child, you know, our brains only developed far enough to be told what to do. Yes. So don't touch that. Do this. Yes. Do your homework. Do, the, do that. That's don't it. do that. Do this. That's it. That's as far as the, the brain can comprehend. And then you, at that age, you tell kids that, you know, there's a hell. Mm -hmm. What is that supposed to teach them? Accountability at a young age. Um. Or if or if you teach adults about hell, they still have issues with it, and so mm. you know that everything they do must must come out of fear, mm. no, out of accountability. So I'll only do the right thing if I'm scared. You do the right thing because it's the right thing. How is that a good teaching? You what do, do you the right thing because you do the right thing, right? Why did you start questioning that, man? And truth is not subjective. And, and right? which religions have been exposed to Christianity? Um, I mean, growing up in Durban, you're, you're exposed to Islam, you're exposed okay. to Hinduism, mm. you're exposed to, to Christianity, obviously, Catholicism being a part of that. And none of them uh, have... So I hope he's not mingling, because he said uh, Christianity and Catholicism uh, associated with that. So I hope he's not mixing the two, because the two are not the same. Catholicism, uh, the doctrines are the doctrines of the popes which have come from there it has nothing to do with the christian faith it is far off as a matter of faith that's why the protestant movement happened okay mm. i hope he's not mingling none of them man i think they, they all fell short in the same way is mm. that it's it's um you you look at we'll use christianity here for example you know like some of the stories you just you you go that can't pass noah's ark didn't happen it didn't happen or you don't believe it. That's, that's, that would be an interesting direction for the question. If you say it didn't happen, you've created a conclusion about what the Bible says is a historical thing. And so whether you believe it or not, if it's, the, if it's a historical thing, but anyways, we differ from that. Okay. 
you know, mm. I come from a, a home where you 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 don't just do as you're told mm. by anyone. Mm. It could be your parents, the government, anyone. Mm. You don't just do as you're told. You ask. And why? And get to a point where you understand. The problem is we skip that step, I think, a lot of the time. We, we, we're so used to being told what to do that we almost look for people to tell us what to do. Mm. Is that past us or the Bible? So we want people to tell us what's right and wrong without asking for ourselves, well, why is it right? If you're using yourself then, if you're asking yourself, then what is the standard? Like you have to establish first and understand, I'm not opposing his method of, of critiquing truth. I'm saying you have to, you, you yourself as an individual, you have to have a standard by which you examine what is true. And so uh, what do you use to, to examine whether something is true? Does, is it because it feels right for you? Is it because it fits within your model of understanding? That, that, that then will help you understand it. I'm not opposing what he's saying. I'm just saying by establishing that, you help the conversation forward. All right. right wrong. I mean, you read the Bible. There's a hor- mm. horrific things in there, man. Mm. In- horrific things. It's, it's a history book. It has history in it. And so you're going to have mankind's evils show up in there. Okay, let's hear some of them. No, I mean, there's, there's, if you're gay, you, you, the punishment is stoning, hell, adultery. It's, it, uh, only the, the woman is punished, funny enough. Mm, no, the woman, it's not only the woman that's punished. Uh, I think he might be using the, the text, I think it's John chapter number eight, where they bring a woman who was caught in the act of adultery uh, the 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 funny thing is that uh, the Bible writes it exactly the way it happens, but they were not doing it right because if you read actually Leviticus uh, chapter number twenty verse ten, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number twenty two verse twenty two, uh, these show you that both the parties should be brought forward. Now here they didn't bring both parties forward, which is why he says he that is without sin amongst you. Because remember, there was there is what is known as the temple prostitutes that were there by the period of the rabbis and the the schools of um, Shammai and uh, and Hillel, right? But during that period uh, of the schools of thought, by the time when Jesus came, this there was something that is called the temple prostitutes, and so they didn't bring the man. And funny enough, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough. Catch this. In Deuteronomy chapter number 17, verse 6, it actually says that they, you would have to bring two or three witnesses. And so they didn't have witnesses to begin with, which is not how you're supposed to handle it. And they didn't have the male there. And so uh, it's not the woman only. So that one is dealt with. Uh, let's move on to hear the other question that he also has. Um, slavery is okay, you know, under certain regulations. Mm, no, uh, by by in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter twenty-two, it actually gives an example. There is what is known as um, a voluntary, a voluntary. Okay, so you would volunteer yourself to be uh, to be what we would call a slave. But in, in their period, it was for financial reasons. If I could not provide for myself and I need someone actually has to do that. Uh, there you go. I will give myself as a slave for labor, basically. And after a particular period, I would then uh, be released. But also, not only was it voluntary, there was also for debt, to paying off a debt. You see it also, I think it's in the book of Esther. I can't remember exactly. And which gives that example of people who owed someone and they, uh, uh, you were supposed to serve them for a particular year and period. That Exodus chapter number 22, the reason why I mention it is because it, it gives an example of a man who came with his wife. And it says if he came with his wife, he should go back with his wife. And so uh, stay very by that period. Debt, whatnot. You have to study it within the context. And uh, for people that have studied the subject, they can answer that better. And so when you have questions, wait so that you can get the answers. Don't just uh, settle with the question because uh, you, you end up teaching others. Error. But anyways, so those are some of the questions that he asked. You guys can go check out the video on Mac G's YouTube channel. He did this interview yesterday or it premiered yesterday. So this is a reality show. We do daily Christian commentary videos. We do this on a multiple upload video days. Other videos, they will be done in the pin comments and I'll see you on a later on. Y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of commentary. And so we should encourage each other to start 